this one second. Okay. Now, um, just to remind me what we discussed last week. Last week we, we started module one, which is power electronics and rectifier circuit, where we make introduction to the topic, which is power electronics. We, talk, we compare between power electronics, uh, switch mode, power supply, and linear power supply uh, in terms of efficiency, weight, size, losses, and so on. And then we move to the applications of power electronics uh, in different sectors, industrial, residential, um, commercial, and uh, transportation, space, and so on. And then uh, we give examples at that time. Then we brief uh, the four circuits, rectifier circuit, inverter circuit, DC chopper circuit, easy voltage control circuit. After that, we um, uh, start revising semiconductor devices. We mentioned that semiconductor devices, these switches could be uh, uncontrolled, like diode controlled, like a switch, uh, uh, general switch or control switch, which is transistor, BGT, MOSFET. It could be thyristor, but using uh, gate pulse. We discuss, uh, we revise each one of these switches and what are their performance in terms of power, uh, frequency, current, voltage. And also we mentioned to the losses in switching on and off and how we calculate them using formula. Today I will revise, still revision. Okay, next section, next session, inshallah, we will start with the power, with the first type of, of the circuit of power electronics, which is rectifier. But today I will revise with you principles of, uh, or fundamentals of electrical technology, because we will need them, okay? You see how much, how many, how many revision I need in different sectors, because this is what, what 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 happened in power electronics. Power electronics, we will design, create something, circuit to do something, and to to make sure that our circuits created correctly and work uh, operate uh, correctly, we need to do calculation not only for the uh, let me say um, the performance parameters, but also to protect, to control, to operate. All these calculations are important to make sure that my circuit will work. Now, um, as you know, we will use the SI unit system uh, from from level one. You you've been using this system, and you know what is it about. And also, um, if we have a circuit, a closed circuit, then definitely we expect that we have supply and we have load. So could be represented by circuit one and circuit two, and current coming from circuit one from the supply going to the load usually we use a small letter here as you can see i and v respectively to mention that this is instantaneous ac and you we usually calculate average rms uh, uh, for the voltage and current and power as example power okay in level two when we talk we talk about electrical and electric circuit analysis we mention at that time Analysis here, it means we calculate current voltage power energy, right? So when we know the electrical parameters in every branch, we can design, we can control, we can operate our circuit. So power, as you can see, is voltage times current from principles, and we integrate because at the end we will have waveform. So we integrate it with respect to time divided by the total period of time. Then we can find the average, as you can see, power. And if we substitute P by VI, because here you see here VI, and <clears throat> do more simplification, because V is I, R, okay, and take R as a common outside here, and I by I is I square, then by defining RMS, you remember RMS? Okay, if I come to average I, it will be 1 over T, integration i dt but when we come to rms this is from principles just to remind you one over t integration i square dt and there is square root here so if i use this formula and try to use it here then i will come that p average is r i square okay 
Don't forget I capital here, I, I bolded capital here, mean RMS value. This is still the principles. Also in AC circuit, let's take as example inductive load R and L supplied by supply and current following from supply to the load. Then this current contain two components, cosine component and sine component, because it's complex at the end. You, you, you remember, it's complex. It mean I equal I P plus J I Q, similar to Z. Z equal X plus J Y, where Y is the imaginary part, X is the real part. And if I sketch current here, on X axis, I have the cosine element. On Y axis, I have the sine element. And this is the resultant, which is the current here and phase shift between horizontal and the current will be the angle phi. It's lagging minus because it's inductive and follow the current, the voltage, sorry. If we sketch them, if we sketch them, this is V and this is I. You can see I delayed here. V started and after a while, which is phi, I started, okay? And I represented by two components, as I mentioned, I uh, real part and imaginary part. Now we learn from level two that we can represent voltage by maximum, which is square root V. V is RMS cosine omega t. And the same thing for current. The difference is phi, because this is the phase shift between current and voltage. Okay. Also, we represented the impedance by R plus J omega L, where omega L is X L which is reluctance, or they call it sometimes that are uh, inductive impedance. Now, according to Ohm's current will be V over Z. I'm still revising all these already studied in level one and two. OK, so if I divide the polar one, OK, as you can see here, vector one, sorry, vector one exponential J zero of exponential J phi, and this will go up, it will be in minus here. Then at the end, I have current with phase shift. Now for AC, we learned that we have active power, reactive power, and apparent power, okay? So when I come to apparent power S, it's V I conjugate, okay? Where conjugate means the sign of the angle will be different, opposite, and if it is both plus, it will be minus, if minus, it will be plus, as we learned before. Then if I multiply them, I will come to S with J phi, or simply S represented VI. Now we learn also from uh, principles in level two that the power P is I cos IV cosine phi, and the, uh, current, the reactive power Q is IV sine phi, okay? One of them cosine, one of them sine. So if I use this, VI cosine, as you can see here. And don't forget, IP is the maximum value cosine omega T. And IP here is the cosine element with respect to phi. I can substitute here. The same thing could be, say, for the IQ, the reactive part, as you can see here. So in general, S equal P plus JQ. And from this formula, if two of them given, of these elements, the third could be found. As example, PQ given, S found, you can find S, find S. SP given, you can find Q, and so on. Also, we define power factor at that time, power factor to be P over S, which is simply cosine. Why? Because P is V I cosine theta, or phi, let me say. So cancel V with V I with I, what is left? Cosine phi, power factor. But here, here let, let me, without continuing, okay, let me ask a question here. What, what cosine phi is used for? This power factor. What is it? If, you, if I ask you to define power factor, how do you define it? Why we use it? Anybody remember? Find the angle. Um, still, I mean, as an electrical engineering, they ask you about efficiency. You will say it's, it's a relationship between output and would give me indication, as example, about my losses, if loss is high efficiency, low, I lose more. So it's related to the cost. What about power factor? I'm not talking about the formula. Don't, I'm not asking about P over S or cosine phi. What it give? What it mean? 
Uh, here, okay, let me, I will answer, I will answer, okay. But before I answer this, I would like to highlight something. Please, uh, you need to have an idea about the definition, about why, I mean, any, any parameter you deal with, you need to know what is it, from where it came, what I'm going to use it. This is important. It's not enough to remember the formula or to apply them. We, you will apply them, okay, it's okay. But we need to understand the physical meaning behind this formula. As example, when it comes to power factor, yes, it's P over S, which is cosine phi, but it's useful to give me indication about how effectively I utilize my real power. Just a minute, I couldn't catch it. Okay, I will I will explain to you. Have a look, have a look. Here, P over S, which means P over P over J Q. Correct? Right? Okay. Now, the input coming from generator usually, okay? So, P, the real power, is only generated in the generator. We cannot generate P anywhere else. In capacitor inductance, we only store. When they release, they don't generate. They release when they store. Okay. So, what about Q? Q can be generated elsewhere. Not only in generator, we can generate it in, from capacitor bag, from uh, synchronous condenser, from different places. Okay? For that, we need to make sure we maximize P generation in the generator and we minimize Q. If Q is zero in the generator, it means P over P, it means one, it means this is the best power factor. It's like efficiency. When P, Q increases, then P over P plus Q will reduce, will go down. So power factor is low, it means I lose more. The environment is not good enough. Got it? So it's preferable to have cosine phi or power factor, which is equal to one, which means P over P. But we, we cannot reach this, uh, this situation usually because the generator cannot generate only P. It, it have to generate Q because it have contact inductances. Anyway, let me back to three phase. We mentioned in level two, and if you remember, uh, that we have also three phase, not only single phase. Rather than we have one supply, it's like three supplies, we put them together. Why? Because when the rating increase, the losses increase, and to reduce them, we go for a three phase. Okay, we discussed three phase, star, delta, delta, star, delta, delta, star, star. We discussed them. As example here, star, star, star load, Z here, Z here, it's, it's plotted this way and delta in this way. And we, you remember that we, we define the balance system. We say that balance system, it means the voltages, the three voltages for the three phases have the same maximum value and their phase shift is 120 phase shift between them. As example, you can see here, this is VA, another 120 VB, another 120 VC and here 120. You got it? So this is the phase shift between voltages. Just to uh, use this formula in this example. Have a look at this example. An inductive load connected to 120 volt, 60 hertz, AC source, draw one kilowatt at a power factor 0.8. Now one kilowatt, this is the unit for P, Q, S, for which one of them? Gentlemen, ladies, anybody remember? Kilowatt is the unit for P, Q, S, which one? P. Excellent, P, correct. You Just let me remind you, just let me remind you. P, it's what, or kilowatt, whatever it is. Q, var, it's unit. S, volt, ampere. Okay, we agree on this, level two. Okay, he told me that the power factor is 0.8, oh, great. Now, what he want me to find? He told me, uh, calculate, by the way, when he told me inductive load, it means inductance. He asked me to calculate the capacitance required in parallel with the load in order to bring combined power factor to 0.9 lag. Okay, just a minute. I, I catch it, I catch it. He told me that I have inductive load and he gave me the power and power factor. And he told me the power factor is low which is 0.8 given here. 
he want to improve it. So he will connect capacitor. And just to remind you, at that time we say the inductance absorb reactive power, capacitor release reactive power. So to co compensate, what we do, we connect capacitor in parallel with the inductance. OK, now power factor get improved. He asked me to find the how much it get improved. OK, have a look. Uh, I come here, I say that the power factor is 1000. OK, and since power, sorry. Power factor. Power factor, which is cosine phi equal P over S. I have P, I have power factor. Let me find S. As you can see, S is 1000 over 0.8. It gave me this is the normal situation. When we connect capacitor, when we connect capacitor, and I, definitely I, I can't find the Q. Q equals square root S square minus P L square. It's giving me 750 var. OK. Now lagging. This is my first situation. When I can connect capacitor, it means I added minus JQ or simply QL minus QC. The, the formula became in this way. OK. Now, S is P over power factor. And since power factor, the new situation is changed. It become 0.9, as you can see here in the question. P will not change when I add capacitor, right? Be because we say P is not generated by capacitor, by generator. So this is keep 1000. QR 750, we already calculated. Here 1000. What is left? QC. We do the math. We do the math. We go to QC is this value. Got it? Easy. Now, um, still revision. <coughs> Doctor. Yes. You can turn down the cell, show you how to do it. Okay. For the S, Kif, even by minus G, QC. Which one? Here? Yes. Okay. Have a look. You, you, the original situation is S equal P plus J Q L. This is the original situation. When I connect capacitor, capacitor will give a Q or will take a Q, will will observe or release, will release. Cap, you see here, inductance is, is sign is plus because it's observed. Take, take Q. But when I connect capacitor, I will minus make minus Q C because it will give reactive power. Got it? Abdullah, is it okay? Clear? Okay, doctor, okay. Great. Now let's come to the uh, the the waveforms. Now have a look. When we convert Example rectifier circuit. When we convert DC into AC, the signal. This is example to what I want to to talk about waveforms. What I want to say about waveforms. Let's assume this is battery. 12 volt battery. Okay, 12 volt. How I change? How how what I did to change this waveform in this shape? How I make it? It's not a metal or let me say something flexible. I, I, I bend it in this way and it becomes sinusoidal. It's really something amazing. Creating, creation, this is creation. Okay? Something not easy to do. If you think about it, how you make this straight line, bend it in this way, it's signal. What you did, we were learning what will happen later on in the rectifier circuit. But now, but just think about it in this way. This is these scientists who did this. Really, they are uh, smart, clever. How they can make it flexible and bend it in this way and make a sinusoidal waveform. Or vice versa, an inverter. Inverter, we have sinusoidal waveform. We back to DC. How, I may, how they make it DC? It's not an easy task. It's really difficult. And we will, so, we will see later on how we can do this, how we can make it uh, smooth and everything related to this. We will we'll discuss it. But this tell me that my waveforms, we will 
change them. We will have a new waveforms, okay? And why we will have a new form waveforms? At the beginning, it will be distorted, okay? Later on, with makeup, we can make it smooth. But at the beginning, it will be distorted. So have a look at this as example waveform here. From experience, for, uh, from, for me, from experience directly, I will say this is a inverter signal, okay? It's look like sine wave, uh, closed sine wave in this way, but it's highly distorted, okay? And if I look to these waveforms, you may, I will say directly, this is input, rectifier input, okay? Better experience, you don't need to know this, later we will know it. But if I look to this signal, double, pulses here, double pulses here, or to this signal, directly I will say, these are distorted waveforms. Then they will affect the supply and the, the load, both. We need to care, take care of them. It's, it's, it's not, not, not enough to design circuit, which will produce the signal, but highly distorted. We need to consider this. Okay, how we deal with these waveforms? One of the way, when it's periodically, changing is to use what we call it Fourier. Fourier could be used to analyze, okay, uh, signals, periodic signals, where Fourier represented by this formula would tell me that there is average here, and there is cosine element and sine element. For cosine element, we have A. A have a formula also contain cosine by the function, integration of the cosine by the function. And the sine by B, B also, is a formula, integration of the function by sine, okay? Fourier can convert the previous distorted waveform into smooth waveform, sine and cosine. Okay. We will see that some waveforms are odd, classified to be odd or even. As example, sine and cosine, okay? This is sine, while this is cosine. Their symmetry, across y-axis and x-axis is different. So if my waveform is similar to the uh, sine, it will be odd. If it is similar to the cosine, it will be even. For that, we can come to directly to this table to use it, which tells me that if my waveform is even, the B element will be cancelled, only A element is there. And if it is odd, a element will be cancelled, only B element is here, which simplify my calculations. Sometimes the waveform could be half wave, even a quarter wave, or the quarter wave. Okay. Now we may use this and we may not depend on our discussion through the semester. But just I would like to mention it highlighted. Now distortion in input. See here in this circuit. Okay. Now this is the voltage VS. And this is my current IS, supply current. This is not sine solder waveform, it's highly distorted waveform. Yes, it's AC because it have positive and negative according to the definition of AC. But you see here, zero. This is sinusoidal. But this one is not sinusoidal because here it's long, it's not point. It's long period. Now this is highly distorted waveform. How we deal with it? We need to consider the distortion by considering harmonics. Now, let me define harmonics. Have a look. Any waveform in the world, any waveform in any speciality, in electrical engineering, in mechanical waveforms, in mechanical engineering, waveforms from music, okay? Because harmonics coming from harmon, okay? Which is ma mainly used at the beginning for a musician. Okay, when they have uh, they, they 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 play the guitar as example, and um, sounds coming harmonics together. Okay, so harmonics define any signal, any signal as example this signal. This is distorted signal. This signal could be defined by harmonics into splitted into fundamental, which is called the first and distorted, what does it mean? It's, this signal is created by mix of infinite number of signals. All of them are pure sinusoidal waveforms. The first one is fundamental and others 
are harmonics. The second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth, fifth, seventh, until infinity. When we combine them together, we have the original signal, which is this. But usually, the fundamental is the solo of the signal. And if this is an increase and distortion in reduced, because together will give 100% of the signal. If fundamental increase, distortion reduce, this mean, what this mean? This mean my, the, my waveform become more pure sensoidal, become uniform until we get distortion equal to zero. So the whole signal will be fundamental. This means that's a pure signal. Now, if I take this idea and come to current I, I will say any current I, I source is fundamental plus harmonics, summation. You see summation because it's second, third, fourth, fifth. We add them together. I call them ISH, H harmonics. Okay? And if I represent them by uh, sign, okay, then the fundamental is this one. This, the, 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 you see one, here one, it means fundamental, the first. Summation of here H, it means the harmonics, the second, the third, just we need to substitute and we go further. If I come to find the RMS value, I will square both and take square root as we learn. And I can say distortion can be found by subtracting the fundamental from the original function, which is the current. Now, this is important because we need to know how much distortion are we create. Um, yes, I, I want to convert my, my AC here in rectifier into DC. It will be look like this, as we discussed before. Okay? So this is not pure DC. It contains harmonics, distortion. I need to know this distortion. So can I mitigate it, attenuate it, reduce it, cancel it in different way? One of them is using filters. So we need to, we will see later, we will need to find the distortion. Now, few parameters, new parameters I will define here. The first one is the total harmonic distortion, THD, THD in percentage. THG, THD, thermal, total harmonic distortion, is the ratio between the distortion to the fundamental. Okay? If distortion increase with respect to fundamental, total harmonic distortion increase, and this give me indication that my waveform have more distortion, have high harmonics, which is not good. And vice versa, if distortion reduce comparing to fundamental, this is good. It means total harmonic distortion reduce. We will see there is limits, and we have to consider this. It's not enough to design circuits with high distortion because we will have our supply and our load. Definitely distortion from this formula can be substituted here and more simplification we go with this. Now we will use it later on examples, it will be clear. The other parameter is a crest factor. Crest factor compare the peak value with the original value of the current, okay? And it, it gives indication about the relationship between also with the distortion, but in different way. Then total harmonic distortion. I will explain it with example. It will be clear. Now also back to the power, because I want to improve the power factor definition here. Now we, we, we mentioned for this in the previous slide. We mentioned for S is VSI, S power factor is PS. But when we come to the AC, we know that S is VSIS. But power P is Vs I S1 cosine phi 1. Why 1? To say that we only use the fundamental. Distortion is losses. It's not something good. I use it. Okay? I use only fundamental because fundamental is a sinusoidal pure which represents the soul of the waveform. So if I cancel Vs here, what is left? I S1 times cosine phi one. Just a minute. This is the new definition for power factor? Yes. Now, if you talk with people dealing with electrical engineering, they know that power factor is cosine phi. Very simple, P over S, cosine phi. 
this is approximate. This is not the real situation. Why? Because this is correct. If my waveform is a pure sinusoidal waveform, which is not the situation, later on through the semester, the, the course, I will talk about distortion in more details and I will show you the waveform measured here in, in the university, in industry, in Sahara industrial area. Anywhere you go, you never find pure sinusoidal. Always there is distortion. Okay, for many reasons come. I will talk about it at that time. But this tell me that my power factor is not any more power factor cosine phi. No, it is cosine phi 1 by IS1 over IS. And if I define cosine phi by DPF, displacement power factor, then power factor will be displacement, which is cosine phi by fundamental over the original function. I can link, I can link power factor and displacement power factor with total harmonic distortion through IS. 1 over is, it give me this formula. It's also a useful formula. If power factor given to you, you can find total harmonic distortion and vice versa. Let's take example to close this session. A voltage and current consistent with passive signal convention for a device are shown in figure here is given. This is the voltage and this is the current. First, he wants me to determine the instantaneous power observed by device. You can find it by uh, signals from signals directly, or you can find it for, by formula. From signals, you will come to say, okay, I know that P equal VI, okay? So let's multiply. This voltage is 20, by this voltage 20, it will be 400, so the power will be 400. This voltage is 20, this voltage is minus 15, it will be minus 300. This voltage is zero. This current is minus 15. It will be altogether zero and so on. We can sketch the new waveform by multiplying current and voltage. Easy? I think it's easy. Or you may say, okay, let me find the formula for voltage and current and then multiply. Okay. You will come to say from zero to 10 millisecond, as you can see here, the voltage is 20. And from 10, to 20 milli, the voltage will be zero, as you can see here. The same thing could be, say, for current. It was 20, and here minus 15 for the time from zero to six, from six to 20. Okay. Now, what else? And uh, just a minute. Is it all? It's okay. Have a look. Have a look. I will come to say, okay, since uh, the, the time duration is different, it will be started from 0 to 6, and from 6 to 10, and from 10 to 20. Then I will multiply. 20 by 20, 400. 20 by minus 15, minus 300. 0 by minus 15, 0. I got the, the formula for the power. So either you, you take this side, which is the formula directly, or you go for formula, uh, yeah, rather the waveform or formula. I go the first one. The second one, he asked me to determine the energy observed by device in one period. Energy observed by device. Okay, I will come to say energy is integration of power with respect to time. Okay, according to the waveform or the formula in the previous slide, I will integrate the power from zero to 0 0.6, which is 400 and from 0 0.6 to 10, which is minus 300, and from 10 to 20, which is zero. It's very easy. Direct substitute, we got it in June. Let me back. I got the second one. The last one is determine the average power observed. Average, I know it's integration of one over T, integration the function with respect to T. Okay? So I just need to integrate, or, or let me say if I have energy, I can divide it by period, which is 20 millisecond, to go the power directly. Second example, determine the RMS value of the periodic waveform. Here it's like square, but not square. From zero to dt, from zero to dt, we have Vm. From dt to t, we have zero. So the formula represented here, clear. Now he asked me to find RMS from definition one over T integration V square DT. But since V have two value, two parts, 
I will integrate it for the two parts, zero to dt, vm square, dt to t, zero. Do the math. This is how it look like my waveform. Now, these are just to excite you to work on driving formula from the waveform and how we find average or RMS power energy from this formula. With more examples will be more uh, clear and you will be more familiar. Victor, please repeat part A. Part A? Yes. Which one? This part A here? Yes. How okay. How to and how to find minus okay. 300. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Let me change the color, okay. Have a look here. Now, this is the waveform and it repeats itself again and again from T, as you can see here, from zero to 10 millisecond, the first part here. And the second part here, T greater than 10 millisecond and less than 20 millisecond. I will come here. The first one, it was 20, 20 volts. The second one, it was zero, zero volt. Anybody, just a minute, good, good to, to back to math. Do you remember what we call this formula? What we call it usually. We classify functions, if you remember, in level one. In mathematical foundation, you classify function into algebraic, uh, trigonometric, exponential, power. This is, uh, let me remind you, okay, you don't remember, let me remind you. This is called piece wise function. It means function with different pieces. Got it? And this is what happened. We have piece for this part, we have piece for the other part. Clear now, Umayma? Yes, doctor, but are these uh, graphs well given? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, it's given. You see here what he told you? He told you, as shown in figure, he gave you the figures. You just need to drive the formula from figures. Got it? Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, now let's come to, to remind you to capacitor and ductance. I, I, I remember we discussed this in level two in uh, electrical and electronic circuit analysis. What we say at that time, we say that inductance and capacitance are storage element, inductance store magnetic energy, elect uh, capacitance store electric uh, uh, energy. Okay. But how they behave when we switch on the switch of the circuit? The, when we switch on the switch of the circuit in the inductance situation, current will not rise directly to the maximum current. It will take time increasing gradually. Why? Just this is explained before in level two, I explained to you. I told you conductance is a choke. It's hanging the current. It needs time to open. So current increases gradually. It takes time until it reaches the maximum current. Got it? The same thing for voltage in capacitor. In capacitor, when we switch on, on the, 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 the capacitor, the voltage builds gradually increase until it reaches the maximum. It's like if I want to say in another way, inductance when we switch on the switch will not be directly conducting the, the current. It takes time, even if it's a small time in millisecond or microsecond, but it takes time and it's open, it's work, it's operate as open circuit first and then it go to become short circuit. In capacitor, the voltage will build with time. It's behave as short circuit phase, the capacitor. It get charged until it become open circuit. And the full voltage appear across. I just want to remind you because these behaviors will be mentioned in our discussion for different circuits. Last point, and I will close this session, is just to let you know that we have different parameters. When we design the circuit, we need to take them in consideration. As example, I mentioned to power factor efficiency, I mentioned to, uh, we need to know the power, power, active power, reactive power of the circuit. We need to know the current, the voltage. We need to know total harmonic distortion, Chris factor. Also, we define the power in a rectifier as example circuit. We define the power to be DC, and AC. AC is the input, DC is the output because it have different shape. And efficiency will be the DC output over the AC input. Also, this is AC. AC is the RMS value, okay? And just to keep in your mind, IRMS 
square equal IAC square plus IDC square. Okay, so we have AC, we have DC, we have RMS. And also form factor is another factor which gives me indication of, about my, from the name form, how it look like comparing with the sinusoidal waveform. It's VRMS over VDC defined by this form. Ripple factor, ripple factor is mean how, how much the ripple in my waveform. Yeah, it's, it's can be defined by the relationship, this VRMS, VRMS over VDC square minus one under square root. Mm -hmm. We will use this formula later on. I will stop here. I will stop here and we will continue next uh, session. If you have a question, please do not hesitate. Do you have a question? Any question? Okay, I will stop here. I will stop here. Okay, and we will continue. Yes, Abdullah. Doctor, what are the rules that we need to follow? Because we are going to have many rules today. We just started. You will have many formula. All of them is available for you because it's open book exam. If we talk about exam, so don't worry. All formula in front of you. With examples, you will learn how to use this formula. You will. You, you know, it doesn't mean we will use all of them in, in in our discussion. I mentioned for for them, but some of them we will use. We will use some of them, and with repeating examples, you will be familiar with them. Don't jump down to the final exam and don't think about exam. Just step by step. We just started. Okay. I will stop here, and see you in the next. session.